Hey, what is going on, you guys? It is Gawa here, and welcome back to yet another Magic the Gathering video. Today in this video, we're going to be looking over my brand new, long-awaited Marinar, um EDH deck. Uh, this deck is fantastic, and I'm so, so excited to hop into it and to show you guys all the stuff that I have and put together for this kind of cranko version but it's a mono black version but yeah before we hop in the video as always if you're new around here be sure to drop a sub a like tell me what you would change in the deck and stuff if there's anything you would change and if you're new around here like i said um click the link in the bio for the discord we're always up to no good there and before i even hop into the video i just wanted to say as well that um i released like kind of back-to-back -back videos this video will be coming out right after my uh, box opening. And that's just the simple fact is I'm getting a, I, I got a new job recently and it's a big kind of intensive over Christmas. So I probably won't have a crazy amount of time to upload. So I just wanted to hop into these and get this out as fast as possible for you guys, because you know, I'm gonna put out as many videos as I can. But yeah, enough of my monologue. So Marinar is a um, two, three. He's a five drop, two, three. Uh, all rats have fear, so that's just overpowered in general uh, by itself. And you tap him, you sacrifice a rat, put X11 one, one black rat creature tokens into play where X is the number of rats you control. So again, it's literally just a Cranko, um, but like, you know, not even a bit better. It's just, it's just like Cranko, if I'm being honest. <laughs> so let's hop into the land base so far. So in this deck, we start off with 22 basic lands, uh, basic swamps, I should say. Uh, so here's the swamps here. Um, so some of the like utility lands, we run 30 lands in total in this deck, but we do have a bunch of mana dorks and stuff. So, you know, it works out. So we have a Bojuka Bog. We have a Reliquary Tower, because there's gonna be ways to um, kind of draw your whole deck, so you're gonna wanna have that. We have a Cabal Stronghold, where you tap for a colorless, or you can tap three and add black for each basic swamp you control. Then we have Cabal Coffers, where you tap two and you add black for each swamp you control. We have Swarm Yard, it taps for a colorless, but it has that great thing where you can regenerate target insect, rat, spider, or squirrel. If you were around in the Chatter Fang days, you know I, I actually had this in my Chatter deck. Uh, next we have Nixo Shrine to Nix, so that's just a basic devotion, so you tap two. And I mean, if you have all your rat colonies out and stuff, you're just gonna make a bunch of mana off of your uh, little black blips, so. Uh, Cavern of Souls, just so we can, you know, have uncounterable rats. And the newest card to this deck and one of the proudest cards to own is an alliance as I do believe Lake of the Dead. So Lake of the Dead comes into play, sacrifice a swamp, bury Lake of the, or bury Lake of the Dead. And you add black to your mana pool or you can sacrifice to add four. I mean, it's kind of like condescending with the whole um, uh, Cabal Coffers just say because you're basically sacking swamps so you get less value. But I mean, it's it's more of like kind of a late game thing but uh, yeah, so we'll just hop into, because we have one here, we have a Soren Markov as the Planeswalker in it. He's a six drop. So his plus two ability is Soren Markov deals two damage to target creature or player and you gain two life. And that's for a plus two. You minus three target opponent's life becomes 10 and you control target player's turn during that player's next turn. So our Markov's just a really good, just get them down to 10 and just run them over with rats pretty much. Uh, we'll hop into the enchantments next. So the first enchantment we have here is Kaya's Ghost Form. Very, very good card. So enchant creature or planeswalker you control when enchanting permanent dies or is put into exile, return that card to the battlefield under your control. So I had, I had a thing like that last night where I was playing Slick, shout out Slick, and uh, he hit me with like 20, 20 damage to all creatures. And basically, Mero and I are just back, bounced back because he didn't die. Uh, we have Bad Moon. Uh, black creatures get plus one, plus one. It's just really good because your rats are going to be like, uh, you know, a million one because they don't get pluses. So that's good. Uh, Greed, just some card draw here. It's just a four drop and you pay two life and you draw a card. 
with a Verabos. We have this in here. This is one that I would like personally probably take out if I have to ever revamp this deck. But I mean, it gives your creatures uh, life link. So if you're at a table with like four or five people playing commander, I mean, you just keep swinging away with like, you know, your infinite, infinite rats and just get infinite health, you know? <laughs> Uh, next we have Phyrexian Arena, so at the beginning of your upkeep you draw a card and you lose one life. So that's good because you'll have basically two card draws in one. Black Market's not uh, another card that I don't think gets talked about enough, but whenever a creature dies, put a charge counter on Black Market. At the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, add black for each charge counter on Black Market. So it's going to be really good with Marinar because, like... Like you can see, Marinara's ability is to sacrifice. So every time you're sacrificing the rat, you're basically putting a charge counter on black market. Haunted one's another really, really good one. Commander creatures you own have whenever this creature becomes tapped and other creatures you control that share a creature type with it get plus two, plus zero and gain undying. When a creature um, with undying dies, if you had no plus one, plus one counters on it, return it to the battlefield under your control with plus one, plus one counter on it. It's just... It's just a cheese card. It's just very cheese. Uh, we'll we'll hop into the spells category now. So for the sorceries, we have Kindred Dominance. So this is just basically going to be your, you know, destroy everything but your rats type thing. Uh, next we have Mutilate. So all creatures get minus one, minus one until end of turn for each swamp you control. I mean, as a four drop, I mean, it's kind of like, uh... But I mean, again, if you don't have like Lake of the Dead in and you're late game, just say you have 10 swamps or something, you're going to like neg, neg 10, neg 10. You know what I mean? So like you're just basically wiping the whole board and starting again. Speaking about another board wipe, we have Damnation, Destroy All Creatures That Can't Be Regenerated. I put these in here. I don't really like to use them like rarely, but like when I have to, you know, I got to do it. Next, we have one of my favorite cards in this deck. I mean... Again, through Marinar's ability, you're creating a bunch of creatures. So you can sack a creature. You pay one, sack a creature, uh, add four mana to your mana pool. So, you know. Uh, next, we have Demonic Tutor. Search your library for a card. Put that card into your hand and shuffle your library. We have Imperial Seal. Search your library for a card. Sh uh, then shuffle and put that card on top. Echoing Returns. This is a really, really good one. Return target creature card and all other cards with the same name as that card from your graveyard uh, to your hand. So that's just going to be really good because we have 22 copies of Rat Colonies. So <laughs> next we have my beautiful man, 1994 Starter Grim Tutor. Shout out to my local LGS for this. But search your library for any card, put that card into your hand, then shuffle your library. So we have two that put it on top and two that put to your hand. So I mean, it's not bad. And then this one is actually a really, really good card for this deck. Exile target non-land card from your graveyard. So basically, if you're just starting out, you're going to have to sack a um, rat colony to start the Marinara train. So basically, you could just do that and exile it and then search for um, any number of cards with the same name as that card. Reveal them. So that's where like Reliquary comes comes into play and later on you'll see like we have jet medallion and stuff so you know you play your jet medallion and then you make um you know just like you just basically take your whole deck of rat colonies and just put it in there uh next we'll get to the instance now we have dark ritual so you know one drop add three to your mana pool we have vampiric tutor pay two life search your library for any one card uh shuffle your library then put the card on top we have Deadly Dispute, another one of those things where since we have so many creatures to sack, it's just another really good little sack outlet. As additional cost to cast this spell, sacrifice an artifact or creature, draw two cards and create a treasure token. And then, you know, we have everyone's favorite Adnaz, reveal the top card of your library and put that card into your hand. You lose life equal to its converted mana cost. You may repeat this process any number of times. So, you know, you just keep doing that, go hunt for your other things. But I mean, there is some big like drops in here, like, Marinar, or not Marinar, uh, Sora Markov, and like Black Market's actually pretty big hit, and you know, stuff like that, I mean, if you end up hitting that, it's not too bad, it's not the end of the world, you know what I mean, and again, if you hear any noise, like I said in the last video, so my dog, she's just kind of playing around, uh, so yeah, let's hop into the artifacts now, artifacts consists, decent amount of artifacts in this deck, so, 
Let's start off with Eldrazi's Monument. So creatures you control get plus one, plus one, have flying and indestructible. At the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice a creature if you can't sacrifice Eldrazi's Monument. So again, really good. You're going to make a bunch of creatures. It's like Cranko too. You have a bunch of goblins, so easy to sack one and keep that going. Next, we have Skull Clamp. That's just a given. Just to give plus one, minus one, whenever equip creature dies, draw two cards. You're basically just going to want to farm card draw. Again, this is what I mean with Reliquary Tower. You can pretty much draw half your deck almost with that alone. Uh, jet medallion black spells you cost or you cast cost one colorless less to cast insane card just for the simple fact that you'll be able to just cast your rats for a single black so i mean it's great lightning greaves pretty self-explanatory uh throne of eldrain is another one i threw in here because you can choose a color so just black and you add four mana of the chosen color spend this mana only to cast monocolor spells of that color and you can draw two cards spend only mana of the chosen color to activate so it's really good Next we have the Thrumming Stone. This just works hand in hand with like the Rat Colony because spells you control have Ripple 4. So whenever you cast a spell, you may reveal the top four cards of your library. Um, you may cast spells with the same name as the spell from among the revealed card without paying their mana cost, put the rest in the bottom of the library. So the Ripple will just keep going. So just say you Ripple 4, you hit two Rat Colonies, you play them, you'll Ripple 8, you hit another 3, you'll Ripple 12 you know, so on and so forth. So it gets just an easy way to, you know, grab it all. Null Rod, Null Rod is just my heated card in here. Players cannot play any uh, any artifacts with activation. I just have people in my play group personally who play a lot of artifact heavy decks. So at the end of the day, I'm just like, nah, Null Rod. <laughs> Next, we have Illusionist Braces. So whenever an ability of an equipped creature is activated, if it isn't a man ability, copy that ability. So basically, you can just throw that on Maronar, and basically, he will double up his trigger. So you'll make um, double the rats. I think that's how Illusionist works. Um, I never actually hit it in game, but I've just read some forms and stuff that that's how it supposedly works. Next, we have Jewel Lotus, Sacrifice at 3, Soul Ring, Sensei's Divine at top, just to, you know, kind of get rid of the bad cards and stuff in the bin. Uh, Mana Crypt. So Mirror Box is a good one too. The Legend Rule doesn't apply to permanents you control. Each legendary creature you control gets plus one, plus one. And each non-token creature you control gets plus one, plus one for each other creature you control with the same name as that creature. Just a banger card. Uh, next we have Thornbite Staff. So this is gonna work the same way as Cranko. You're gonna equip it to Maronar. You're gonna tap. You're gonna make your rats, but you're gonna sack a rat, you're gonna untap Maronar, and then you're basically just gonna have infinite rats. So, beautiful. Uh, as Door of, or Door of Destinies is the next one, so you choose a creature type, which is rats. Whenever you cast a spell of the chosen type, put a charge counter on Door of Destinies. Creature you control gets plus one, plus one chosen type for each charge counter. So it's just an easy way to cast the rat colonies and just go crazy. Arcane Signet. And then we got this bad boy, Acroma's Memorial. Creatures you control have Flying, First Strike, Vigilance, Trample, Haste, and Protection from Black and from Red. Banger, banger. Before we get into the bread and butter of this, of the creatures, I'll just show you what tokens you'll need. These, this creature can't block. These are the only tokens I could find of rats, but they actually can block. We got treasures, copy, rat, treasures. So pretty much all it is is just treasures, two rats, two treasures, and a copy token. All right, let's hop into, like I said, the bread and butter of this Maronar deck. So, we start off with, we have my beautiful Rat Colony. If you never read, read Rat Colony before, Rat Colony gets plus one, plus zero for each other rat you control. A deck can have any number of cards named Rat Colony. So we took advantage of that, and we have 22 copies of Rat Colony in this deck. These are the hardest things to find, man. From commons, like from Dominaria and them only being commons, man, they're pricey as shit too. I'm just like, God damn, you know what I mean? So yeah, we have 22 uh, rat colonies. So we have Dark Confidant. At the beginning of your upkeep, reveal the top card of your library and put that card into your hand. You lose life, you can switch convert a mana cost. So that's kind of like Phyrexian Arena, but like a little bit worse, but it's on a creature. So basically you're going to just get two cards per upkeep. Next we have Pack Rat. Pack Rat's power and toughness are equal to the number of rats you control. Discard a card, put a token out of the battlefield. That's a copy of Pack Rat. So that is just cheese, man. Because just say you have like infinite rats, it'd be an infinite infinite. And then on top of that, you can just copy that and then have another infinite. Oh, it's just, oh, it gets 
fucking ridiculous. And then you have Crip Rats. So X Crip Rats deals X to damage. Each tree player spend only the black man in this way. So it's just a little kind of board wipe for all creatures. Next we have Species Specialist. A Species Specialist enters a battlefield, choose a creature type. Whenever a creature of the chosen type dies, you may draw a card. Next we have Ariara, First of Lost Wayne. So whenever Ariara um, or another black creature enters a battlefield in control, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. So again, it's another little cheesy way. So if you have that set up where you basically can just run your opponents over with the that and you just have infinite infinite rats coming in you know because they're considered black creature tokens so next we have ash code of the shadow swarm whenever ash code of the shadow swarm attacks or blocks other rats you control gets plus x plus x until end of turn where x is the number of rats you control and then at the beginning of your end step you may mill four cards if you do return up to two rat cards from your graveyard then we have Ogre Swarm Lord. It's just whenever a non-token creature dies, you may create a 1-1 one, one black rat creature token. Rats you control have death touch. Zulaport Cutthroat is basically another one. Uh, when Zulaport Cutthroat, another creature you control dies, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. We have Piper of the Swarm. Uh, rats you control have menace. Create a 1-1 one, one black rat creature token for a generic and a black. And two generic and two black. Sacrifice three rats. Gain control of target creature. Uh, we have Karamonix, the Rat King. So basically, he gives Toxic. Uh, other rats you control have Toxic 1. And when he enters a battlefield, you look at top five cards in your library, reveal any number of rat cards from among them, put the rest, or put the reveal card in your hand, put the rest in the bottom of your library. And the last card we have is Ink Eyes, Servant of Oni, a ninjutsu rat. Crazy, crazy card. Whenever Ink Eyes of Oni deals combat damage to a player, you may put target creature from that player's graveyard onto the battlefield under your control and you can regenerate ink eyes for a generic and a black. See, ink eyes is really crazy because it's very rare that you're gonna hit because or miss unless you're playing a black deck or someone who runs artifact creatures because that's the only way that you can actually block fair. But on top of that, you're gonna have menace, death touch, um, you know, the whole works. But yeah, I hope you guys did enjoy the video. Um, this was a really, really fun deck to make, and I had a lot of fun making it. Um, it's won me a lot of games so far. It's a very, very good deck. Yes. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the video, like I said. And if you're new around here, be sure to drop a sub, like, comment, you know, all that stuff. Join Discord in the link below. And yeah, as always, guys, I love y'all. Thanks for watching. And remember... If it ain't Gawa Gang, it's no gang. Stay blessed. I love y'all, like I said. And peace.